Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Today, we are continuing a series that I have been doing the past couple days where I talk about what I think each lottery team should do with their draft pick. Today, we are all the way on to the sixth overall pick where the Atlanta Hawks will be drafting. This is an area where I think that the top three players will most likely be off the board in LaMelo Ball, James Wiseman, and Anthony Edwards. So I'm not even going to consider them for the Hawks unless it's a trade-up. They're going to be looking at everyone else, and here's my opinions on who they should really be considering drafting on November 18th. My first choice for them would be Denny Avdia. I think that he has potential to be a very solid wing in the NBA. He can come in and be an excellent secondary playmaker for you. His shooting isn't great, his defense isn't great, but they are going to improve with time in my opinion. His form looks good, and even though he's a shoddy free throw shooter, I do think that it's going to come along and he's going to end up being a solid shooter just because the mechanics look pretty good. He also does have defensive potential. He's a very smart player. And I think that as he works out more and grows into his body and becomes stronger, spends more time in an NBA gym, he's going to develop his defensive skills and become a pretty solid defender. So if I were the Hawks, I would really be looking to draft him because I think he can be a great fit alongside Trey Young as a guy that doesn't need to shoot all that much. He can just kind of be that secondary playmaker and someone who can play off of Trey on the wing. My second option for them would be Tyrese Halliburton. Halliburton would probably be a better fit than Avdia because this team uh, in the Hawks has some wings that they really like in guys like DeAndre Hunter, and Cam Reddish. I especially am bullish on Reddish. I think that Reddish is going to end up being a pretty solid NBA player. Maybe even someone worth trading Luka Doncic for. Just kidding. Just kidding. But the combination of Trey Young and Cam Reddish is nothing to, to, to snarl at. That's going to end up being a solid pairing down the line. So I really don't think the Hawks got destroyed in that trade too bad. But we're focused on this year's draft, not the 2018 draft. Uh, Halliburton would be a great fit because he can fill both a need and has a solid ceiling as a pretty good NBA player. I don't think he'll ever be an all-star, but he could certainly be an above-average starter. His defensive skills will do him well as a guy who's going to be playing alongside Trey Young. He's going to have to take the tougher matchup of the two a lot of the time. And he also can run the backup point guard pretty well as... Uh, he played point guard all the time at Iowa State, and that is a need that the Hawks really need to fill. Uh, they were pretty atrocious there, and they ended up trading for Jeff Teague, and Teague was an expiring. I'm not sure if they'll bring him back. So Halliburton can fill that need, and he also, like I said before, is going to be a good NBA player. He also is a good fit alongside Trey Young because he's a really good catch-and-shoot guy. Uh, shot well over 40% on catch-and-shoots in college, albeit at a low um, a low rate because he was playing on the ball so often that most of the time it wasn't a catch-and-shoot situation when he was shooting the ball. But I do think that Halliburton would be another very good option for the Hawks, and I honestly wouldn't be all that surprised to see them draft him over Avdia as well. My third choice for them would be Onyeka Kungwu from USC. I think Okungwu is going to be a really solid NBA big man, and although they do have... A pretty solid center in Clint Capella. Uh, I would not be against moving that Capella contract, even though you just traded for it, because I think Akungwu is the best player left on the board at this point, unless Avdia is here, but there is a chance that Avdia won't be here. So if you just want to take best player available and not worry about fit, Akungwu would be your guy. I would say he's a better prospect than Halliburton. So if you're going best player available, Akungwu might be the best guy here. Uh, Halliburton, you could make a case for. Killian Hayes, you could make a case for, although I would not like a backcourt combination of Killian Hayes and Trey Young, so I really don't think that they should go with Killian Hayes. But Akungwu would be a very nice player. Uh, he has shown a bit of a post game. He's a good defender, definitely a better, a more switchable defender than Wiseman. He can guard the perimeter a bit better than Wiseman, although his shot blocking is not on the same level. He was actually a magnificent shot blocker at USC, but I'm not sure that it'll translate as well as Wiseman's shot blocking will because 
Wiseman's a seven foot one guy with a seven foot six wingspan. Onyeka is only six foot nine, so there is a pretty big difference there. However, I do like Onyeka quite a bit, and I would be very much in favor of the Hawks taking him here at number six if Danny Avdia wasn't on the board and Tyrese Halliburton wasn't the uh, route that they want to go with. With the fourth over, or uh, not with the fourth overall pick, we're talking about the Hawks, not the Bulls. My fourth option for them would be to take Devin Vassell from Florida State. Vassell is going to be your standard 3 and D guy. High floor for him. Low ceiling. Maybe he can become a Gordon Hayward type player where he can also develop some playmaking. But at this point, he pretty much just looks like your standard 3 and D wing. So, I don't know if you want to go with him at 6. Maybe it's a trade down option if you're getting... Vassell just because of that low ceiling but I also think that adding a low ceiling guy wouldn't be the worst case scenario for them last year they drafted DeAndre Hunter with the fourth pick and Hunter clearly didn't have the highest ceiling but he did have a high floor and he's a guy that's gonna end up being a good role player I think that Vassell could be a very similar pick and they could just continue to add wings that are gonna be solid rotational guys in the NBA my next option for them would be to draft Isaac Okoro. I know a lot of people are going to take offense to me having Vassell over Okoro, but I think that Vassell is just a safer prospect. I have so many questions about Okoro's jump shot. Everything else in his game is terrific. The defense is great. He's maybe the best defensive playmaker in this draft, as he's a guy that's going to create plays on that end of the floor with steals and blocks. He's great on the ball. He's a great team def defender. Maybe the best defender in the draft. He also is great getting to the rim. He's a pretty good passer. It's just that jump shot that's the swing skill. It wouldn't surprise me if he ends up being the best player in the draft. But I just have too many questions about his jump shot to risk taking him anywhere in the top 7 or 8 picks. My next option for them would be to, for them to trade up. The Hawks could give up. One of two packages. I think that if they were to trade up, they would want to move into the top two. Both because that those are the picks that are most likely to be available. And also because the only guy I could see them really trading up for would be Anthony Edwards. And he might not even be available once you get past the second pick. So uh, they could either give up John Collins straight up for the first or second pick. Both the Wolves and the Warriors have a decent need at the big man spots. I uh, the Wolves could add someone to play alongside Carl Towns, and the Warriors could add someone to play alongside Draymond Green. And Collins could be the answer for them. I think that he is a player that the Hawks probably want to keep, but I don't know if they want to pay him the max. And if they don't, they could look to move on from him. And getting the first or second pick in exchange for Collins could be an excellent deal. At that point, like I said, they would draft likely Anthony Edwards, and they would also hang on to the sixth pick, or they could draft someone like Obi Toppin, who could be Collins' replacement as an offense first big man. So that's certainly an idea for the Hawks that I would consider. Alternatively, they could give up one of their other young players who doesn't have as high of level, as high of a level of trade value as John Collins, as well as the sixth pick to move up to one or two. That would probably be DeAndre Hunter or Kevin Herter. I think that Cam Reddish is too good and too valuable to trade uh, to only move up four or five spots. So I think it would have to be Hunter or Herter. And that's definitely something you could consider if you think that uh, Edwards is a guy with all-star potential. I'm not quite that high on him. I acknowledge that the potential's there, but I think that there's a lower chance of it happening than maybe most people do. And I don't even think most people think that it's going to happen. So... I don't know if you want to give up one of those two guys as well as your sixth pick where you could add another role player to move up to one or two to grab that guy who could maybe be your second star. But if you are high on Anthony Edwards, then it is a move you could consider making if you are Travis Schlenk and the Atlanta Hawks front office. The next option I have for them would be to trade down. I have two little trade packages in here where they could move down only slightly in the draft and also add on another asset. One would be to trade down two spots with the Knicks. The Knicks would trade up to six to leapfrog the Pistons so that they could take their choice of a point guard in Tyrese Halliburton or Killian Hayes. 
and they would give up Frank Nielakina and the eighth pick. That's an interesting idea for the Knicks, and I do think that they should probably do it because I don't think that Frank is the answer for them at the point guard spot. I don't think that Dennis Smith Jr. is either. And so if they are not planning on signing Fred Van Vliet, Killian Hayes could be a great option for you. Uh, I think that Killian is probably the fourth or fifth best player in this draft behind um, the top three, obviously, and potentially behind Avdia, potentially behind Onyeka. But other than those guys, he, in my opinion, is really good. I think behind LaMelo and Wiseman, he has the highest all-star potential in this draft. I just do have some questions about whether or not he could become a bust due to what I've heard is maybe not wanting to be a role player and thinking he has to be a star. I don't know if he can reach star level. I think it's possible with Killian, but I don't know if it happens. So if he has an ego problem, that wouldn't be great. So maybe that's how he could fall in the draft. But if I were the Knicks... I would be very much in favor of giving up Neil Aquina to move up two spots and make sure that you get Hayes before the Pistons draft. If you're the Hawks, uh, you're only moving down two spots. So if your guy is Vassell, Akungu, or Okoro, there's potential that he could still be there at eight, even Halliburton for that matter. And you are also able to bring in a guy who can play in your backcourt and be a stellar defender in Frank Nielakina. Obviously, Frank struggles on the offensive end of the floor, but on defense, he is a very, very good defender. Not quite Chris Dunn or Marcus Smart level, but he is very good on that end. My other option for the uh, Hawks to trade down would be to move to the 10th pick. They could give up the 6th pick, and I think they would have to give up another asset. Maybe it's the 50th pick. Maybe it's their second round pick next year in exchange for Kelly Oubre in the 10th pick. Oubre could be the best wing on their roster this season if they were to make a move for him. Um, they have a lot of cap space, so it wouldn't be a problem for them to take on his contract and extend him next year. He's a, still a pretty young guy. He's a solid defender on the wing. He can score 20 points per game. He can shoot the ball pretty well, so he could play alongside Trey Young to a certain extent. I think it would be a very good move for the Hawks. And with the 10th pick, once again, you can add like Sadiq Bey, or maybe Vassell or Okoro is still there. Maybe Okungwu is still there. You would have options, and you're getting a player that's probably in a similar play level as who you would draft at 6. If you're the Suns, the idea of this would be to move up to draft someone like Tyrese Halliburton or Killian Hayes to be your point guard of the future, someone that could learn under Ricky Rubio the next few years, and once Rubio's contract expires, take over for him at the point guard spot. I don't know if I love that idea, because if I am the Suns at 10, I would really, really be thinking about drafting Kira. Lu Kyra. Uh, I'm so bad with names, I always forget if it's Kyra or Kira. Lewis from Arkansas, Alabama, not Arkansas. I always mix those two up. Why do there have to be two red SEC teams? But uh, if I were the Suns, I'd be looking to draft um, Lewis there. I think that it could be an excellent idea for them as he could be their point guard of the future alongside Booker. So I wouldn't necessarily make that trade, but if they are planning on moving on from Kelly Oubre, they could move up and get a higher caliber prospect in Hayes or Halliburton. And they also could bring in the 50th pick where maybe you can nab a guy who will be something someday. They've had some decent success with their second round picks recently. I think they took Ellie Yacobo and like Jalen LeCue and... Javon Carter, and Ty Jerome, all in the second round in the past couple of years. So maybe they could have another successful pick there in the late second round. And the last couple options I have here for the Hawks would be some guys that, if you just don't like anyone else I listed above and you don't want to make a trade, you could draft them. Obi Toppin, oh, I, I'm, not, I'm not a big fan of this guy at all. I think he's going to be a bench player in the NBA. He's great on the offensive end, but the defensive end, I have too many questions. I think that he can only guard fours, and I don't even know if he can guard fours. And in this NBA where you have to be able to be flexible, I think that that's one of his worst attributes. 
So I would really not want to draft Obi Toppin as high as six. I think his range should be more the late lottery, but on the offensive end, he's a menace. So maybe if you're the Hawks, you take a risk at him. The last guy I'm going to say, this is a big reach, and I don't think there's any way the Hawks should take him with the sixth pick. If you want him, trade down for him, but I just love Sadiq Bey. So I had to mention him here. He could be very similar, maybe a Denny Avdia light as a guy who can play make from the wing, can shoot the ball. He's actually a better shooter than Denny. He's probably a better defender than Denny. I am in love with Sadiq Bey. I think he's the sleeper of the draft. I would honestly rather have him than Okoro. The only reason why I have him so much lower than Okoro on my options for the Hawks is because you can probably trade down and get him. But I think Sadiq Bey is going to end up being a top 6-8 to eight guy in this draft. And I think whichever team gets him is going to be lucky because they've found a good NBA player. So, in conclusion, there's plenty of things the Hawks can do with this pick. They can get a guy like Denny Avdia, Tyrese Halliburton, Oneka Kongwu, Devin Vassell, Isaac Okoro. If none of those five guys, or obviously, probably two of those five guys won't be there. And if they don't like the other three, they could either trade up to one of the top two picks or trade down to somewhere in the 8 to 10 range. And if it really comes to it, they could draft someone like Obi Toppin and Sadiq Bey. Let me know what you think the Hawks should do with their pick in the comment section down below. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed. That's it for me. Ladies and gentlemen, I will see you all again very soon.